Hey, what's happening, guys? Here's our old friend, the 555 timer. We're not talking about it today. I just holding here to show you this is one example of an oscillator. And I have a playlist that has 10 other oscillators that I've built in there from discrete components. Colpitt's oscillator, uh, Pierce oscillator, uh, uh, transistor relaxation oscillator, uh, crystal oscillator, just all sorts of stuff. What I'm saying is there are a lot of ways to make an oscillator, a circuit that changes state. Okay? Well, there's easier ways than making it out of discrete components. This is one of them. This is a CMOS chip called the CD4060. And uh, it's a pretty neat chip because it has a built-in oscillator and frequency divider. Want to know more? Let's go take a look at the data sheet. Okay, here's the uh, data sheet for that 4060. And we'll take a look down through here. But there's a uh, there's some of the features you can see: a 12 megahertz clock rate at 15 volts, common reset, buffered inputs, Schmidt trigger, input pulse line. There's some applications. There's the internal structure of the chip. There's the maximum ratings. We're going to come down here and look at these uh, characteristics. So our supply range, 3 to 18 volts. I'm going to run today at 5 volts. It runs good there. There's no reason to overdrive it. You see input pulse rise times. It can take a pretty slow rise time. So that's really nice. And an input pulse frequency if we're at 5 volts of 3.5 megahertz and a reset pulse width of a minimum 120 nanoseconds. So it's, it's a pretty wide range chip and it works very, very well. And there's some more data for you. Just download the data sheet if you're interested. There's some typical circuits and what you see here, I have built this circuit that you see right here. So there is pin 11, 10, and 9. And we've got our capacitor here on pin 9. We've got a 1K on pin 10 and a 10K on pin 11. They're all connected together at one side, and the other sides are connected to these particular pins. So what you see is happening here is we have our first stage inverter, a second stage inverter, and then a Schmidt trigger which is really nice so that's going to give us a nice hard square wave as opposed to anything else so these two here build up our RC time constant we've talked about that before uh, or you can just google RC time constant if you don't know what we're talking about but you get the idea so if we come over here Hello. All right, here's another look. And th this is a different circuit. I'm not using this circuit, but I just wanted you to see this. Hello. Hello. This formula here. 2.2 .2 times RT times CT. So it's 2.2. .2, there's CT. There's RT. That is our... RC component and that's how you find the frequency now you're all up on it and you know what's going on so if we take come in here and take a look at our circuit you can uh, compare and contrast that with what we're going on with the data sheet here is our capacitor which has one pin at C9 and then one pin out here on this lonely row there is R1 at C10 which has one side going to uh, pin number 10. The other side out here is meeting the capacitor. And there is R2, which is 10 times R1. One side going to uh, pin 11. The other side coming out here to meet all three of these, completing that circuit. R1 is 1K. R2 is 10K. You want to make it 10. Uh, this one 10 times more than this one. It uh, helps smooth out things and makes the oscillation run smoothly. 
VCC is on pin 16, a ground is on pin 8, and a uh, reset pin needs to be held to ground, otherwise the chip will live in a reset state. That's on pin 12. So here we go, I have it running. Let's uh, have a look at it on the scope. Now, oh, before we go to the scope, channel 1 of the oscilloscope here is on output 7, which is the divide by 16. And channel 2 is on output 5, which is the divide by 32. So those are our first two. And we can take a look at it. Boom. There we go. So there's our channel 1, and it is at a frequency of about 11.25 kilohertz. There's channel 2, which is, is our, our divisor there. And you can see it is exactly half the frequency, 5.62. But a better way to do it is just to come in here and look like this. So there's one, two of those for one of those. It's a two for, a two for one. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is the rise time here is less than two microseconds. And if we zoom in here, nice and tight so that you can actually see the rise time on these you'll see we're getting uh, definitely less than two microseconds. we're getting uh, 20 nanosecond 30 nanoseconds rise time so that's not bad at all good rise time on these it gives you a nice sharp edge if you need to trigger something quickly now um, this thing if you put in a fast enough crystal, it'll we can get many megahertz of oscillation out of it. But I just wanted to show this basic operation of it today. There's a lot of things you can do with this. And this is just one example of an oscillator on an IC. There are hundreds of others. This is just a common one. A CMOS CD4060B. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick little look at this chip. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. That's it. I'm out. Peace.